Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video, the week that was. Bit of a recap on what I've been doing with um, my Yarny adventures this week and some shout outs to people whose podcasts I've been watching. So let's get started. I'll do the shout outs first. A lot of people do them at the end of their podcast and not everybody watches the video to the end. And I really like to shout these people out. They're from the UK. So first of all, Blue Heart Crochet with Abby. I really enjoy watching her and her, what she's been up to and what she's been making. Um, I love her accent because she reminds me of my friend Amanda who lives in Liverpool. Please check out her channel. Subscribe if you like it and say Judy sent you over. Number two, and they're not in any particular order. I watch it, I've been watching all three of them. The second one is My Yarny Corner. Now, Alex is the host. There's Dan and there's Finn. She knits, she crochets. Dan's, she's learning to sew. Dan sews, dye yarn. Finn shows you things around town. It's a really lovely podcast and a joint effort. And Finn is so sweet. You've got to watch this, guys. Um, I really enjoy seeing all the snow. So yes, My Yarny Corner, make sure you check it out. And guess who's back? Made by Mum with Natalie. Remember uh, Made by Mum Natalie? We hadn't seen her for a while and she's doing an advent opening. So I hope you go over and check out her openings. Encourage her to stay doing videos because occasionally we get to see little Jacob in his new glasses. I hadn't seen him in his glasses. It's been a while. So guys, I'll put a link to these channels in the description below. Please check them out. Subscribe if they're your, doing your type of thing. And yes, say Judy said hello. So on with my yarny week. Well, I have been still trying to reduce my number of whips. So my first UFO landed is my December cow for Zeta's calendar cow. This is, she's doing cows and I, I started out doing different things, but I have got into knitted cows and this is for December using the purple, the pink, the black. I really like this one. I've made it for me because it's, this one is lightweight. It's made in an eight ply or three weight DK yarn and it's really perfect for those winter tropical nights, which aren't that cold. It is, I've got to find the pattern. Dun, dun, dun. What did I do with the pattern? It's called the Waterfall Cowl and it's on Ravelry. It is a free pattern. Won't be a moment. I did have a copy. Here's a copy. Yes, it does print in black and white. It doesn't print in colour, but I hope you can see that, how it, it goes up like that. It is a great cowl. She gives you multiples because I made, like, I think she recommended a four millimetre knitting needle. And I use 3.75 and just cast on more stitches. I think it's a multiple of six. Um, I like my cows quite close and firm around the neck. I don't like them big and sloppy and baggy. So, yes, I really like this. And this is my last entry for Zetta's Place Calendar Cow. My cow for December. I used um, Fiddlesticks Superb 8 yarn. It's a yarn we get here in Australia. Um, it's an anti-pilling, 100% acrylic, um, Tex yarns, made in Turkey. They recommended a 4mm knitting needle, and I st still wanted to use a 3.75. So yes, I'm quite pleased with the way that turned out. So the pattern, as I said, is on Ravelry. You can check it out there. It is a free pattern. And if you want to email me because you'd like a copy, I'll see what I can do about sending you a copy of the pattern. So, UFO landed number two. For those who have been subscribed for a while, you know I made Levi the lovey. And I said I wanted to make another one because I loved it. I started it and now I finished it. Here he is. All I did different was I made him a little bigger, a little longer, a little bigger. And I might have done his face a little different, but he is so cute. This is knitted, real basic knitting. Any beginner could do this. This pattern is on Ravelry too. 
um, but I really like it and this probably will end up in my Etsy shop I just made it I use the carnival um, soft eight ply yarn here that we get it's really soft and baby it's good for baby so yes and I use a um, like you know the pantyhose socks socket I use one of those and stuff that and put it inside so the baby can't pull the stuffing out but that is Levi the lovey isn't he cute I think he's really cute so that was UFO number two now the big UFO I landed, and I love it, I'm glad I finished it, is, ta-da, my big lap gown. I did get carried away, but I wanted to use up the Lion Brand Pound of Love, which I bought a lot of a couple of years ago, and there it is. I'll have to put a photo of it at the end. The reason it sat around as a whip, I am... Um, I was trying to balance out the colours. I had this pattern in mind and I had like eight rows, but I ran out of lavender. I didn't have enough. And then when I opened the whip bag, I thought, what the heck, I'll just put the border on it. This is a tutorial by Krista at The Secret Yarnery. It is called The Sober Granny and it is perfect. If you're starting out crocheting, you could be able to do this. It's not that hard. And do you know why it's perfect? Because the sides stay straight. You cannot mess up the sides and make them crooked. It's just, it's just absolutely perfect. You can sit and watch TV do it and know that your sides will be perfect. And then she gives you such an easy, great border that looks cute when it's finished. I really love this tutorial to the point that I think now that I've finished it, I make a lot of lap gowns for charity and usually I uh, last, well, 2022 it was V-stitch. I think for 2000, 2021 was V-stitch. 2022 will be the Sober Granny. It works up quick. It is lovely and I cannot lose the stitch count and mess up the sides. <sighs> Probably rushing. I should slow down. But that is UFO number three. Like I said, it was pound of love. I had a lot of lavender and I have still got one ball of lemon left. Um, they recommend a five millimeter knit, um, crochet hook. Krista recommends you go up a size. So I did do mine with a six millimeter. It is perfect. It's a great tutorial. Please, if you're looking for a lap down, try it out. I will put it in the description below. The link to it the sober granny so they were my three finished objects for this week so that's six now I've done from my 20 I'm getting the number down slowly but surely <laughs> no I've done five frogged one can't say that I actually finished one I frogged it so where am I up to review of my teas for the last I think I'm going to do seven days, so let's get organised. Won't be a moment. So, are you ready for the review of my T2 calendar teas for the last seven days? Starting with Green Rose, which is a flavoured green tea, vibrant green tea with a blend of rose petals. Now, I don't drink the green tea. Thing does it for me, and he said, look, I did smell it. And it was light. It didn't have a strong aroma. It did have a rosy aroma. He said it was light, fruity and quite rosy. It wasn't very strong in the green tea taste. He did enjoy it. So that was the first one. Day 13 was New York breakfast. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting what I got. It was a nice tea. It was just very vanilla flavoured. Didn't have much aroma, but it had a very strong vanilla aftertaste. New York breakfast. Then came Sensha Tea, another green tea that um, Thing tried for me. This was day 14. He said it was a mild green tea. Um, pleasant, but not sort of special. Nothing special, no aroma. Just a nice mild green tea. Just very average. 
Then we had French, the uh, French Earl Grey, and I said I'd tried the French Earl Grey that a lady blends here, and I hadn't enjoyed it because it's quite perfumed. So I tried the French Earl Grey. It's a nice tea. It is a, a very light aroma. It's not overly a strong tea, and it does have a perfume flavour, but not strong. Not like the one I had that was blended here in Australia. So this is quite a nice tea, French Earl Grey. Then I had one I'd never heard of, Sticky Date Delight. Yes, what can I say? I love Sticky Date Pudding. This has a pleasant aroma. Uh, what did I put? It has a nice caramel taste and it's not an aftertaste. This is a really nice tea. I had it hot and I really enjoyed it. So then I drew out Go Go Goer. What can I say? Climb aboard a rickshaw and hit the buzzing streets of Goa. Yes, it did taste like a tea of Asia. Um, it was nice. It didn't have a strong aroma and it didn't really have a strong flavour. But they do say it has... Um, it has like it has a biscuit aftertaste, if that makes sense. It's not unpleasant, but it has a biscuity flavour. But it is definitely an Asian type tea. So they were my seven teas from the tea two calendar that I've been opening. What was my favourite out of the seven? Mm -hmm. Of course, sticky date. I really enjoyed it. I love caramel. I love a tea that doesn't leave a strong aftertaste and is pleasant to drink. That was my favourite. Thing's favourite out of the green teas was um, green rose because it had like a rose petal flavour as well as green tea flavour and he said it was quite pleasant. So yes, they were our favourites. There does seem to be quite a bit of green tea in this event calendar, but that's the way it goes. So guys, that was my week. Um, I haven't really been up to much else other than I talked to my son in London who had disappointment this week. He was going to join his partner and family in France for Christmas and no longer can go because um, the French government have decided um, only essential travellers can go. So this will be the third Christmas he has spent without family. He'll be doing a Zoom meal chat thing with um, his family in France on Christmas Eve because they do their big celebration Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day he'll do the same with us. So I um, frantically thought I'd send him some more gifts on Amazon that will arrive before Christmas. I wanted him to have lots of gifts to open so he won't feel so lonely. But yes, nothing other than really cleaning up, tidying up, getting ready for Christmas and planning my menu. Traditionally on Christmas Day we have turkey, but this time we're doing something different. I'm doing a small turkey for Christmas Eve, and on Christmas Day, we are, Thing and I are going to do a slow barbecued brisket. We've never done it before. We thought we'd have barbecued brisket with some salads for Christmas Day, and Boxing Day is just usually leftovers. But that's what we've been up to, um, and that's it for the week. Hope you guys are enjoying the tea to opening. Um, let me know if you're getting some whips finished for Christmas. And yes, it's nearly here. Santa will be with us soon. So make sure you take care, stay safe, stay well. Remember, you can have a crafty day finishing a whip like Levi. Isn't he cute? Bye for now.